Hey, what's up guys? It's that time of the year again where we get to take a look back over the previous year and find out now what are the very best radar detectors available on the market today. Now, 2016 has been a pretty cool year for radar detectors. Uh, a bunch of stuff has happened. We've had some new radar detectors be released. We've had a bunch of firmware updates made available to fix some of the bugs in existing radar detectors. And we've even had some new apps come out, some third-party apps to add some functionality to existing detectors and make those detectors better choices for a lot of people. So now the question is like, okay, cool. Which one is the best? Well, imagine somebody came up to you and they said, okay, I'm looking for a car. I'm looking between a hybrid, a Ferrari, and a dump truck. Tell me which car is going to be the best car. And you're like, that's not how it works, right? It really depends on your needs and where you're driving and all sorts of things, right? Same thing with radar detectors. There's not one that's universally the best. However, we do have a lot of fantastic choices that each have their own specialties. Now, the way that we're going to break this down is every radar detector has to be sufficiently good in order to make this list to be considered one of the very best. What is it that would basically qualify a detector for this list? Well, it has to meet two criteria. Number one, it has to have really good performance, right? It's got to be able to give you sufficient warning ahead of time before you're being clocked so that you can slow down and avoid that speeding ticket. If a detector's performance sucks, who cares, right? With all the detectors that we're going to be taking a look at here today, obviously some of them are going to offer better performance than others, which can make a difference, but fundamentally they're all going to give you good performance in the vast majority of situations and help you avoid the ticket. Number two, a detector has to be good at filtering out false alerts so that you're not constantly being bombarded with false alerts. And so when that detector actually goes off, you pay attention. Again, some detectors are better at this than others, and some have more features to help deal with these false alerts. But all the ones that we're talking about here are going to be pretty good at filtering out false alerts in a variety of different situations. Now, the really inexpensive detectors are going to be lacking in one of these two areas. Either their performance sucks and or their filtering really sucks. And it's for that reason that they're not making this list. Every detector that we're talking about today is going to offer you good performance and good filtering. Now, what is it that actually separates the detectors that we're looking at? Well, the way that we're actually going to do this is I'm not going to bombard you with a bunch of technical data and a bunch of test results and all that kind of stuff. In this one, we're actually going to boil everything down and keep everything as simple as humanly possible. And here's how I want to do this. We're going to go ahead and start with your basic entry level detectors. And then from that point, we're going to start working our way up in price. And we're going to talk about exactly what the differences are really that separate these detectors. There's a million and one things that we can talk about to compare and contrast these detectors. But really, I just want to boil it down to a few key differences that really will separate the detectors. And the way that we're going to do it is as we start working our way up in price, I'm going to show you what the differences are between the detectors and what you're actually getting for your money so that you can decide whether or not it makes more sense to step up to a higher end detector or if you can get by by saving some cash up front and go with a more basic detector. So in this video, that's the way that we're going to be comparing them. So that said, what are the detectors here on our list? Well, starting with our entry level detectors, at $200 we've got the Uniden DFR6. At $300, the Uniden DFR7. $300, the Escort Passport Max. Around $350 to $370, you've got the Max 2. At $400, we've got the Redenso XP. At $450, we've got the Valentine 1, plus the Bluetooth module that you're going to need to pair it with your phone. At $400 to $550, in that range, we've got the Beltronics Magnum and the Escort Redline. At $500, we've got the Redenso Pro SE. And finally, at $650, we've got the Escort Max 360. Now with that said, let's go ahead and start from the beginning and work our way through this whole list. Now starting us off, at $200 we've got the Uniden DFR6. This is the pick for the very best entry level detector available on the market. The reason this is the case is it only costs $200, however it offers the performance that you'll see from a lot of the higher end detectors and the blind spot filtering is actually really, really good. It does not, however, have a GPS chip, so it's not going to be the greatest detector to use in town. In short, when it comes to filtering false alerts, this is going to be a big difference that you'll see between this detector and some of the other detectors, so let's talk about it real quick. 
there's a variety of source of false alerts. One of the toughest ones to filter out is other cars around you that have uh, radar-based blind spot monitoring systems and collision avoidance systems. These are actually quite difficult to filter out and no detector can do it perfectly. However, the Unidens are actually some of the best at any price, so very impressive there. However, this detector does not have a GPS chip. You see, another source of false alerts that you'll see are those speed signs on the side of the road, or even grocery stores and shopping centers that have those automatic door openers. Those door openers are also radar based and they'll typically set off your detector as well. So every other detector that we're gonna be talking about here with the exception of this one has the ability to actually use a GPS chip in some way and learn where those false alerts are located. And in the future, when you pass by those same false alerts again, mute them for you and filter them out automatically. Some detectors have a GPS chip built in. Some will require you to pair your detector with a cell phone and use your cell phone's GPS and an app to achieve that same functionality. The DFR6 does not have a GPS chip and as such, it's not gonna be the best detector to use in the city. This is gonna be your best entry level detector and because it doesn't have the GPS, it's ideally suited to people who are driving primarily on the highways um, or especially if you're driving in more rural areas where again, you don't have a lot of the city stuff like the automatic door openers to deal with. This is a good detector to use more in the highway. It retails for 200 bucks. There are a lot of detectors available in this price range and also a little bit less. However, they're not gonna be offering the performance and the blind spot filtering capabilities of this detector. And it's for that reason that I really wouldn't recommend the detectors that cost less than this. You're gonna be, again, lacking in either the performance or the filtering capabilities. And when you're talking about protecting yourself from the cost of not only speeding tickets, but also the insurance premium hikes, potentially lawyer fees and court costs, I wouldn't recommend trying to cut corners too much. If you're looking for a basic entry level detector, the DFR6 is the one to get. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these ones can be difficult to get. Currently, they're on back order. There's a waiting list to get them. So you can go ahead and uh, purchase one, get yourself on the waiting list, and as soon as they're made available, they'll ship out. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can find them. It's quite possible that by the time you guys are watching this video, it'll be available for everyone. So go take a look. Now, stepping up to $300, we're gonna be taking a look at the Uniden DFR7. Uh, this is basically the same thing as the Uniden DFR6, except it adds that GPS chip. So, you're gonna be getting the additional filtering functionality that you'll want if you do a lot of driving in the city, and you get a lot of false alerts in the city. Again, from those speed signs, from automatic door openers, etc. So, the lockout functionality is gonna be very, very helpful. The idea with this one is when you get a false alert, a stationary one, you basically just tap the mute button here twice, and it'll learn that false alert and next time you pass by it, it won't alert you. Very helpful. Uh, for areas where you haven't been driving in yet and it, you haven't yet taught it where those false alerts are, it also has low speed muting. So if you're sitting at a red light or driving around at really low speed, it can go ahead and chill the detector out for you. Very helpful. Additionally, with the GPS functionality, it also alerts you to any red light cameras and speed cameras in the area to help protect you from those as well. So at $300, this is gonna be a great choice for your general purpose all around highway and city radar detector. Next up is gonna be the Escort Passport Max. This is actually a direct competitor to the Uniden DFR7. And the idea behind this detector is it is an awesome plug and play detector for both highway and city drivers. Think of it as an easier to use version of the DFR7. And what I mean by easier to use is, uh, remember that GPS lockout functionality where as you drive around, you can teach it where the false alerts are located? With this detector, it can do the same thing. However, it can do it for you automatically, where as you drive around, it'll recognize when it's seeing the same false alert over and over and over, and then it will learn that for you automatically without you having to press a button and teach it anything. It can just do it for you by itself. It's for that reason that I think this is probably a better choice for most people. You don't have to worry about, is this a real alert? Is it a false alert? I hope I'm not making a mistake doing this. You can just let the detector take care of it for you, and that's actually really helpful. Additionally, it does have a more modern screen here right on the front of the detector. The red light camera database is updated much more frequently. Uh, the red light camera database is also directional, so there's things like if the red light camera monitors and gives tickets in this direction but not in that direction, the detector knows that and it won't alert you unless it's actually a direction that's being monitored. Additionally, if there's a red light camera that you don't want to be alerted to for whatever reason, with this one you can actually go in and disable the alerts for that individual red light camera so it doesn't keep bothering you. So it actually 
probably does do a better job overall at dealing with some of those false alerts. I think the main downfall of this guy is the blind spot filter is only okay. It's not as good as most of the other detectors here. Um, it's actually pretty decent, but it's not fantastic. The Uniden's blind spot filter is actually a little bit better. So with the Uniden, uh, if you don't really care about the fancy screen and uh, you're cool with manually locking out the false alerts, that I think would be a better choice. However, if you want something simple and easy and plug and play and you don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff, you just want to put it on your windshield and have it do the work for you, the Max is going to be a great choice. Now for about $350 to $370, so again, pricing will fluctuate, you can get uh, not the original Max, but actually the Escort Passport Max 2. The 2 basically adds a Bluetooth chip into the detector to allow it to pair it with your cell phone more easily. You can do that with the Max, but you have to get a special Bluetooth power cable. With this one, the Bluetooth is actually built into the detector. Now the benefit of that is you can actually pair it with your phone and add a bunch of cool features. One of the things that you'll see is when you get an alert here on screen, it'll show up on the detector and it will also show up here on your phone. Uh, if it's a high threat, high priority alert, like a KA band alert or a laser alert, that will automatically get reported to the cloud and it will alert any other driver who's also running this app. If you happen to be running this app, you'll get alerted to other drivers running Escort Live who have also seen that alert. If it's an X band or a K band alert, which is not quite as high priority, when you get that alert, you'll actually get the notification on your phone and you have the choice to actually report that to the cloud or not, or lock it out as if it's a false alert and not alert you to it again, which is very handy. So that cloud integration back and forth with other users is really helpful. Now that said, you could also just run Waze, which does the exact same thing and has a ton more users. And because there's a lot more users, you'll get alerted more quickly as to when something is reported. So you can go in here and then just say, oh, hey, I spotted a police officer. Boom, you can mention a bunch of stuff here, what direction they're uh, clocking and all that stuff. Additionally, once the officer is gone, you can go in and say he's no longer there. So once the threat is gone, it helps cut down on the false alerts so you don't have all of these stale old alerts when the police officer is already gone. With Escort Live, it does the same thing, but you don't have the ability to delete it, so you just have to wait for it to time out. So the cloud functionality is already available in Waze. It's cool that it's available here in the detector. The main thing that I like better with the detector is the fact that when you get the alert, that alert will actually show up here on the screen of your detector. And so if you don't happen to have Waze or Escort Live actually running on your phone, you've got Google Maps or music or whatever else on your phone, you don't have to worry about that as much. It does show up uh, without having to worry about backgrounded alerts and notifications. Additionally, you also have the ability to go in and adjust all of the different settings in your radar detector right here on screen, which is really helpful. It makes it a lot easier than having to go in through the menus of the detector and adjust things this way. So it makes it easier to, you know, configure your detector. And of course, once you're getting the alerts, you can also see everything here, so you have a secondary display. So it's a cool feature. I like the ability to go in and adjust the detector settings this way. It can even tell you the speed limit of whatever the road that you're driving on is. Um, if it has the speed limit for that road, it's not always accurate, but that's a cool feature nonetheless. So a helpful feature to add the Bluetooth functionality, not totally necessary, especially because of the fact that Waze exists. But if you want that functionality for another couple bucks, you can get the Max 2 instead and pair it more easily with your phone. Next at $400, we're going to take a look at the Redenso XP. Uh, this is a new radar detector that was recently released, and you could basically think of it as a Uniden DFR7 with better refinement, better control and ability to deal with the false alerts and better customer service. So performance wise, it's also quite good. In terms of blind spot filtering, it's one of the best available on the market. It's pretty awesome in that regard. One of my favorite features actually has to do with the muting capabilities. You see, this detector also has your GPS lockout. So when you're driving around town, you can just basically press the mute button here on the detector. It'll learn that false alert and mute it for you in the future. It's also got your low speed muting, red light camera alerts, all that kind of stuff. Now, one feature that I really like that it has, I like to think of it as happy wife mode. Let's say you want an especially quiet detector, right? You've got a girlfriend or a wife in the car, she's complaining about the false alerts, or you've got your baby sleeping in the back, or you're on a conference call, or whatever the case is, you want your detector to be especially quiet. Now, the way it normally works when you get an alert, it'll beep like this decay band, right? Yay, cool, every detector will alert when it picks up a signal. You can just press the mute button here, Mute on. and you've enabled this mute functionality. Now, what's cool is when you get an alert at this point, You'll actually see it here on screen, but you won't hear anything. That is really nice if you want a really quiet detector. So if somebody's complaining about the false alerts, this is really, really helpful. Now, if you get a high priority alert, like a KA band alert, for example, 
that you still will get the alert to, as you can see. So even though you have the muting functionality enabled, anything like KA band or laser, you'll still get that alert and it'll punch through this mute filter. Now, one thing that uh, could be potentially risky is if you have this filter enabled, if you're not watching the detector, you're not gonna see that it's alerting you to K band. So something else that I like to do is to pair this feature with, we'll go ahead and go over to the menu and we're gonna change the display brightness here from bright smart dark. to smart dark, which basically says, I want you to go ahead and keep the display turned off for me until there's an alert. And then once you see an alert, I want you to go ahead and display it on screen. So because of the fact that your detector is gonna be more visually dependent, you can have it grab your attention that much more. So I find this actually to be really, really helpful. It's a great way to keep my detector super, super quiet, uh, especially if I'm in an area where I know there's not as much K-band and it's not a huge threat priority, I can go ahead and get the detector to chill out and I really like that capability. While this is going on, I can still teach it my GPS lockouts and all that kind of stuff, so very helpful there. There's other cool stuff too, like uh, the fact that when you pass a red light camera alert, you can go in and manually delete that individual alert. You can't do that with the Uniden, you can do that with the Redenso XP. So very helpful feature there. The customer service here is also really good, much, much better than what we've seen with many other companies. So if you have any issues with the detector, they'll get you covered here. So in terms of the Redenso XP, this seems to be a pretty awesome choice as well. It's another 100 bucks over the Uniden, another $100 over the Max. It doesn't have the automatic lockouts like the Max due to patent issues, but it's got much more muting control, customer service is great, and I like the level of control that the detector gives you that allows you to really help fine tune your experience the way that you would want. Next, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Valentine One, which retails for $400. Uh, this is a very popular detector and its main claim to fame is the fact that when you get an alert, it actually has arrows here, let me mute it real quick, to locate the source of the threat, which in practice is actually super, super helpful. It's a big difference, you know, if the alert is ahead of you or behind you, knowing how to respond, that can be really, really helpful to help you locate the threat. The performance of the detector is really good. The filtering is really good. If you have one of the newest versions, this detector came out decades ago and over the years has been upgraded internally quite a bit. So you're gonna wanna want the newest version of the detector that has the latest abilities to actually filter out all those modern blind spot and collision avoidance systems. Additionally, you're gonna want a newer version of the detector because it adds the capability to pair it with your cell phone. To do that, you're gonna have to purchase an external Bluetooth module for another 50 bucks. So 400 plus 50, you're looking at 450 total here for the package. There is an iPhone version of the module and an Android version, so make sure you get the correct one. Now, when you pair it with your phone, with the Bluetooth module, there's gonna be a number of apps available. On iPhone, you've got V1 driver. On Android, you've got Yavi One. Both of those apps will add GPS functionality, and because the detector doesn't actually have a display here on screen, once you actually get an alert, you're gonna to wanna to be able to see the frequency of the alert, and to do that, you're gonna to need to actually take a look here. Oops, we'll mute this guy. You'll wanna take a look here at the display on the phone to see the frequency. That's also very useful information. So, with the arrows, uh, the really good ramp up to help you figure out what's going on around you, uh, the frequency display, the lockouts, I mean, you've got a really awesome all-around package. It's probably one of my favorite all-around packages, especially on Android with Yavi 1. In terms of understanding what's going on around you and getting all of the information that you would need, there's nothing better than the V1 with Yavi 1. So for me personally, it's one of my favorite detectors for that reason. Is it a perfect detector? No, it's actually the most complicated to set up. You know, the other detectors have really nice menus to go in. With this one, you've got a whole complicated thing with pressing the button and tapping and all this kind of stuff. Um, or you can actually program it through your phone, which is really the way to go. However, you do have to understand some of the more advanced settings about radar detectors, such as custom sweeps, uh, a lot of the filtering characteristics, so you do have a lot of functionality available, but it's not the easiest one to use. In fact, it's probably actually the most difficult to use. Um, we're gonna be talking about the Max 360, which is basically this, but in an easier platform. We're gonna be covering that at the end because it's more expensive. So this one, you're looking at 450 bucks, Android or iPhone. Another downside of this one is the muting that you can get when paired with your phone will help audibly quiet down the detector, but you'll still get all the alerts here on the display. So, you know, even if it's muted, right, you can't hear the alerts, you're still gonna be getting all the blinking lights and arrows and everything, especially when you're driving around in a shopping center or in the city it kind of goes bananas. And so this is a detector I want when I really want to be on point and paying attention to what's going on around me. If I just want to chill out and have a relaxed experience, the V1 is not necessarily the detector that I would pick. So again, each detector has its own purpose and ideal usage, right? This is a great one as a good all around pick to also give you the arrows, but it's not necessarily gonna be the greatest if you want a very simple and easy to use experience.
Next up, we're gonna be talking about the Beltronics Magnum and the Escort Redline. These are basically your long range all-stars. They are the kings of radar detection, especially the red line. The red line is basically the detector that all other detectors are compared to because that is the most sensitive, longest range windshield mount detector on the market. It's fantastic. The detector is a little bit older. It doesn't have the ability to filter out as many of the false alerts, especially the blind spot falses as some of the other detectors. Additionally, it does not have a GPS chip built in. So like the Valentine one, you're gonna need to get a Bluetooth module built into a power cable. It's an optional accessory. It retails for about a hundred bucks. You can get that, pair it with your cell phone. And when you have it paired with your phone, when you get an alert, you can press a button on your phone manually to say this is a false alert and go ahead and learn it and lock it out for me in the future. So like the V1, you're gonna always have to have your cell phone if you want that functionality. Uh, the lockouts are also manual. They're not automatic like the Maxes are. Now, the red line is gonna be best suited for people who drive primarily on the highway, especially in rural areas. And the reason I say that is because the performance is sensational. The filtering, is okay with the phone, but when it comes to the blind spot filtering, it's filtering is not the greatest. And so if you're on the highway or especially in rural areas where you're not gonna have as many of the more modern cars around you and there's less traffic, that's gonna be a phenomenal choice. So if you do a lot of driving in curvy mountainous terrain, where you've got a lot of things actually blocking the radar signal and you want every ounce of radar detection possible because one or two seconds of a difference can be the difference between getting a ticket or not. When it's that close, the red line is the one to get. Additionally, if you do a lot of driving in really open terrain, like out in the flat open desert, you know, and if there's not a lot of traffic, your only advanced warning may be when a police officer is clocking somebody several miles up ahead of you and you want every ounce of detection you can get. You're not as concerned with the filtering because you're in the desert and you don't really care about the arrows as much because you know that if it's going off, chances are he's probably way up ahead of you somewhere. Having a really sensitive detector when that is the highest priority, the red line is the one to get. Now, the reason I'm lumping the red line and the Magnum together is because they're virtually the exact same detector, just with a different name, a different case, different sounds, etc. So they're basically the same thing. However, due to some slight performance differences, the red line is slightly better in terms of performance, and the Magnum's filtering capabilities are a little bit better in terms of filtering out some of those blind spot falses. However, if you're looking for maximum performance, the red line does cost a little bit more. Again, check the links in the video description for the current pricing. However, that's the one to get if you want maximum maximum performance above all else. Additionally, one cool trick about the red line is the red line and the Magnum, both of these detectors are the only ones in this entire list which are completely immune to being detected by radar detector detectors. So if you live or drive in an area like Virginia or Washington DC or most provinces in Canada where detectors are illegal, you may wanna consider a detector like this. Obviously, you're always gonna wanna obey the law, check local laws, all this kind of stuff. However, for those of you guys who are looking for such a feature, these are the only detectors that are completely immune from the VG2 and all variants of the Spectra, all of the different radar detector detectors that are in use. Now that said, if you're looking for that functionality, you may wanna consider a remote detector, a detector that's actually custom installed in your grill. There's the Beltronics STIR Plus and Escort 9500CI. They're basically remote versions of that detector. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a separate video talking about the remote. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and make sure that you're subscribed so that you can get notified for when that video is made available. However, for those of you guys who want that functionality, the Red Line and the Magnum are also excellent choices. Now, if you like the idea of the Red Line and the Magnum and you want that monster level of performance, but you don't necessarily need that radar detection detection immunity, and you want a detector with better filtering capabilities, Take a look at the Redenso Pro SE. This is a tiny detector, very, very compact. However, it's got a powerful punch. The radar detection performance is phenomenal. It's right up there on par with the Redline and the Magnum, which is amazing. Additionally, the blind spot filtering is also more effective and it has a GPS chip built in. So you're gonna get your low speed muting, you'll get your red light cameras, and you're gonna get your GPS lockout functionality without requiring a cell phone. It's all built right in here to the detector, which is very handy. This detector retails for 500 bucks, and it's basically one of the best choices if you want high performance, good filtering, and the GPS chip all built in, this is a pretty phenomenal choice. Now, this detector is not perfect. There still are a little quirks, like I do wish the volume was a little bit louder if I'm driving around with you know, the top down or the music or whatever, I wish I could crank up the volume. 
Additionally, when you get an alert, it can tell you the frequency of the signal. However, it's kind of rounded, meaning when you get a signal like this, it'll say 34.700, but not the exact frequency of the signal. It's good enough to let you know if it's a stalker, Decatur gun, or what brand is, but not the exact frequency. Knowing the exact frequency is a very beneficial advanced feature, but for most people, honestly, that wouldn't matter. Something that might make a little bit more of a difference, and this is going to be changed via an upcoming firmware update, is listen to the way the alerts actually happen when you get them. Band, You'll notice what happens is it'll announce the frequency first and then it'll start beeping. What I've noticed is when you're driving it can be a little bit difficult to hear the voice, especially over your music or anything else that's going on. The beeps do a better job at getting my attention. If my detector is going off, I need to know immediately. The voice does make it a little bit harder, so it may be a couple seconds before you notice your detector going off, and in practice that could be an issue. That's something they're going to be changing to basically make the beep first and then do a frequency announcement and then return back to the beep so that you can hear the quality of the ramp up and understand what's going on around you. So I would like to see that change. It's not a huge deal, but that is something to be aware of with this detector. But nonetheless, the filtering is very effective. The uh, It's got your lockouts, which didn't work at first. That was one of the issues. Um, but now with the latest version of the firmware, it does seem like they've addressed it. The performance is great. And this is gonna basically be a pretty awesome all around detector. Now, finally, your most expensive windshield mount radar detector is gonna be the Escort Max 360. This is basically your detector with all the bells and whistles. It's got your GPS built in to give you the lockouts. It's got your red light camera alerts. It's got a nice modern screen like the Valentine one. It also has the arrows right here on screen to help you locate the source of the threat. Very helpful. Just go ahead and mute it real quick. Um, the arrows can be uh, customized to different colors for different purposes. Uh, you can customize the color to match your car's interior. You can get a speed limit display here. I mean, it pretty much does everything without having to pair it to your cell phone to add that functionality. The V1, you do have to pair it with your phone, get everything set up. The third-party apps with this, it's all integrated and built in. And it's for that reason, because it's so simple and easy to use, and it gives you all the different core key features that you would want, this is probably the best detector for most people if you want something simple and easy to use and you don't necessarily want to be a radar detector expert. It doesn't quite offer the performance of the Redline or the Redenso Pro SE, but it still has pretty good performance. The blind spot filtering is also pretty good. It's not the best out there, but there's no performance hit as there are with some of these other detectors, and it does do a reasonably good job. I wish the blind spot filtering was as effective as like the Unidens and the Redenso XP, for example, but it does do a pretty okay job with the blind spot filtering. The main thing here is you've got your low speed muting, you've got your GPS lockouts, which are automatic. You don't have to manually go in and teach it where the false alerts are located, although you could if you want. With this detector, it's automatic, so if you want something with all the bells and whistles, you don't have to pair it with your phone. You can basically just put it on your windshield and it kind of does everything for you. This is the one to get. It's why if you kind of start noticing, just look around, see what detectors people are driving with. It's very common to see a Max or a Max 360 because of the fact that, again, it's easy to use. It's very simple. You just put it on, a, on your windshield and it does its thing. It's very nice. It does have the Bluetooth chip built in. So yes, you do have the functionality paired with your phone. So when you get an alert, it'll go ahead and display that here on screen. Very helpful. It'll report it to the cloud, uh, allow you to configure the detector from your phone, all that same stuff, just like the Max 2. You've got the same functionality with the Bluetooth built in. That's actually why you see the uh, the speed limit display right there um, is because it's paired to my phone and it knows what the speed limit is. Not of this road, but in general, it'll tell you. Not always right, but very helpful. Anyways. If you want a detector with all the bells and whistles, something really simple and easy to use, the Max 360 is the one to get. Uh, personally, this is a detector that I would consider like a good travel detector. I can just move it from car to car and I don't have to worry about pairing it with my phone and all that kind of stuff. It's just bam, the red light cameras are built in. All that stuff is super, super helpful. So yeah, that's my take on the Max 360. So cool, I hope this helps you guys narrow down which detectors you're looking for. Uh, again, I'm gonna be doing separate videos talking about not just the windshield mount radar detectors, but also the custom installed remote detectors that are installed in your grill to give you a more stealthy and OEM looking interior. For those of you guys who want that, make sure you're subscribed. I'm also gonna be doing a separate video talking about the best laser jammers on the market, just like we've covered here. Fortunately with laser jammers, it's a much simpler decision process. With radar detectors, it can be a little bit tougher, which is why we've talked about so many. Speaking of which, there are a number of detectors that I specifically did not talk about it. For the lower end ones are typically because the performance or the filtering kind of sucks. For some of the better detectors, it's because there's another option here that I mentioned that's a better choice. For example, you've got the Escort 9500iX, retails for a little over 300 bucks. 
which is a direct competitor to the Max. The Max can be found for 300 bucks or less. It's got better performance, better filtering, and costs less money. You've got the new Escort iX, which is the modernized version of the 9500 iX, except that guy retails now for $500. The issue with that one is that on its own, it could be a pretty reasonable choice. However, Escort also makes the Max 2, which is gonna give you similar levels of range, but it's gonna be a faster reacting detector. So overall, you get better performance, you get better blind spot filtering, all of the same features, and it costs far less money. So at this point, there's really no good reason to get an Escort iX. So there are some detectors here that intentionally I did not include, and that is why. It's because the other ones that we're covering here quite frankly, are better ways to spend your money. So cool. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and I really hope it's been helpful. Let me know down in the comment areas if you guys have any questions or even which detector you wound up purchasing or which one you're driving around with and why. Why did you choose the detector that you're choosing so that other people can take a look at that as well and get more information if they need it. Speaking of more information, if you guys need additional help or support in terms of choosing a detector, getting it set up, getting laser jammers installed, or anything as far as getting yourself protected, uh, you can book a private session with me now, one-on-one, -on -one, where we'll actually take the time and get you all set up from start to finish and make sure you are completely covered. I'll put a link down in the video description to where you can book one of those, and those are available as well, so we can work directly one-on-one -on -one and make sure you got everything covered. To learn more about any of the detectors, go ahead and take a look at my channel. I've got reviews for a lot of these detectors and even setup guides to help you walk through the settings and get your detectors configured and explain what all the different features and settings mean. So take a look at my channel for more information on that as well. Until next time, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a big like. Thank you so much. Subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video.